Hello again and welcome to today's COM100 webinar. I'm Jeff Epstein, VP of Product Marketing and Communications, and I'm one of your hosts today. And my name is Kay Chapman. I am COM100 Learning and Development Manager. Prior to that, I have been supervising and leading contact center training for about 10 years. Um, so it's a space that, that I really love and that I'm very privileged to know quite well. This is the point in our webinar when we say, if you only remember one thing to do when this webinar ends, here it is. So stay tuned. Right now, we're going to get into the five strategies that you can use today to disrupt and improve your live chat program. So let's start with the number one, taking advantage of all of live chat's unique capabilities. Customers like you understand the concept of live chat. There's another element called proactive chat invitation. So imagine this scenario for a second. Somebody's on one of your support pages or they're on a form page that should take, I don't know, 20 seconds to complete and they're stuck on that page for 45 seconds. Well, you can create a, what we call a proactive invitation that reaches out to them and says, hey, looks like you're having some trouble with this form. Can I help you? Wow, just like a clerk would walk up to somebody in a retail store who's mulling over the choice of what color dockers to buy <laughs> and say, well, it looks like you're struggling with this. Can I be of any assistance to you? That's the kind of proactive invitation that customers often welcome. Uh, the ability to include things like images and video and upload file attachments, full security compliance, by the way, is another benefit of live chat that a lot of companies aren't fully taking advantage of. Uh, as well, things like canned messages that Kay touched on. Canned messages are prepared responses to common questions. Uh, you want to make sure you're using those because it helps your agents save time. It helps you standardize the messaging, keep everybody on brand. And the last uh, part, the last capability that I want to touch on is the notion of what we call here at Common 100 of campaigns. So imagine your website has 10 pages. Now imagine each of those 10 pages is a very different use case, a very, serving a very different need. Well, how about a live chat experience that evolves and adapts to that use case? So you can have a very different live chat situation on your support page, yet another live chat experience on a sales page that actually routes to a different team. You can use these campaigns to deploy not just the look and feel of live chat, of your chat window, but actually how it engages with the customer and what you can do with it based on different needs around your website. All right, number two, chat hack. Use all available data. Now, okay, so when we're talking about data, what are we talking about? Um, so for starters, you have data available within live chat by default. Um, so at the, at the point that the person comes onto your website, you can see all sorts of information about them. You can see geographic information, information about their visit history. You can see information and even about the kind of system that they're using, um, whether they're on mobile or desktop, and what pages on your website they're looking at. You have so much data there to be able to help you um, route in ways that, that are very intelligent um, and to allow you to basically identify the customer and meet their needs in a really seamless way. And so thinking about other types of ways that you can identify customers better, integrating CRM, we've already spoken a bit about already, that's definitely a great strategy. You can do things like integrate chat with single sign-on as well, so that customers basically, once they've signed into your website, they don't need to sign in again, and you can jump in solving their problems without needing to go through any kind of security checking or data protection, because they've already validated themselves through your website. Um, and in terms of serving customers quicker, just make sure that you are integrating really up-to-date, really easily accessible data sources. Um, that data, it means things like canned messages. Um, there are all kinds of repositories that you can plug into chat. You can in in implement things like um, custom windows of information from all sorts of different sources, basically all working together to improve and quicken customer outcomes. For those of you that maybe work in more regulated industries or work for companies where security and privacy is, is perhaps held more tightly to the chest than other organizations, fear not. What we're talking about here in terms of data connectivity and accessibility, at least on the Common 100 system, is done in an intensely secure compliant manner, whether that's HIPAA regulation or payment card industry regulations or FedRAMP or any kind of government organization that you're looking to make sure your data is secure and masked and treated properly according to the rule of law, you can do that within live chat. So uh, fear not about where, where what's going to happen with that data to the point, for example, where if, if you take a credit card number in a live chat, it will automatically mask it so the agent can't see it. 
and it will not appear in a chat transcript. It's only used for that transactional purpose and then that data is gone. So that's a PCI compliant requirement and you look for a, a chat system that should be able to support that. All right, the next uh, way of getting more out of your live chat system is I'm gonna urge you to look beyond some of the conventional metrics you use in your organization. You wanna look at a range of metrics and you'll know what kind of picture those metrics paint when you consider them as a group holistically. So conventional metrics like customer satisfaction, net promoter score, first call resolution, yep, they apply equally to live chat. You definitely wanna be tracking those, but I'm gonna consider, I'm gonna urge you to consider diving a little bit deeper. Uh, so as your chat strategy matures, and as you add more channels or more complexity, you're gonna to need to get creative about that kind of picture you're painting about the metrics and, and what kind of chat service you're delivering to your customers. So let's look at a couple of examples, uh, chat duration to CSAT ratio. So we found that in, two, in 2019, although chat duration went up 9%, as we presented earlier, customer satisfaction also went up by 0.42%. So you're spending more time with your customers on chat and you're actually getting better CSAT scores. So if it's in your mind intuitively that a longer chat means a less satisfied customer, we're here to tell you that long chats are not necessarily bad. Once your agents are focused on quality instead of duration, you will see better quality metrics. Uh, Self-service impact on chat. So self-service investment goes up, uh, and as you do that, your tier one contact becomes less like triage and simple queries. You're gonna get more complex, and that's gonna have an impact on duration as well, right? So if, if your customer is successfully self-serving on the easy stuff, you can expect the chat to be a little more complex, last it a little longer, and as we've already shown, you're actually gonna generate better CSAT score uh, than you would normally. And first call resolution CSAT, naturally if the training isn't there for your agents, you're still gonna put those at risk, so make sure you're keeping your agents adequately trained. Finally, you wanna look at some metrics like the impact that co-browsing has on customer satisfaction. And as shown before, we are seeing a definite positive correlation. So ensure that you train your agents well in the system you have, Choose a system that is intuitive and easy to use and make that co-browse experience super smooth. Number four here, when you're thinking of live chat as a program, you definitely want to have a continuity plan in place. You, chat is not something that you simply set and forget. You don't configure it, load the code onto your website and walk away. You really want to be taking time not only to review the metrics and incorporate feedback, uh, but always with a mind to improve your service standards. So what do I mean by that? So a continuity plan includes things like a plan with your vendor to take advantage of new functionality. You wanna be able to review new product features that come out over time, decide when it's right for you to implement them, and have a plan in place to get your agents trained and maybe even your customers trained because sometimes the user experience shifts. So you'll wanna take advantage of that functionality when it makes sense to you. The continuity plan also includes staying fully abreast of industry and regulatory changes. So we all live in an environment where regulation is increasingly complicated. Some of us are in industries that are naturally prone to more regulation, like healthcare or banking. So you need to stay abreast of those and understand the impact on digital communication channels of changes to that regulatory environment. So keep those in mind, make sure you're, you're well aware of that. And if you do have a question, your vendor should be fully up to speed as well if they serve those industries, talk to your vendor about that. Next, commit to an ongoing maintenance and improvement plan with your chat program. Have a discipline of always checking in your chat transcripts, reviewing what people are saying, the kind of conversations they're having, checking with agents about chat availability, understanding that they're well-trained on how to use the console, making sure you're understanding where to deploy live chat on your website, in your mobile apps, in other areas of your business. And last but not least, and I'm going to let you talk about this, you have to build in a m mindset of flexibility. Build in flexibility. I, I think, and when we're thinking about why your your continuity plan might need flexibility in it, there's, there's considerations that relate to internal operations and external operations too. So thinking internally, I'm sure a lot of you will be able to identify with times when maybe Say your business has sent out a customer communication that your contact center didn't know about and you get flooded. 
or maybe your product team issues an update or they just drop something in your lap and expect you to run with it. And it's one of those days when you've got half the team in training and you've got half the team out sick and you just don't have the people on the ground to be able to handle that. Well, use the best aspects of chat to be able to absorb so that you don't get hit, so these stats for the month don't go completely out the window. You can flex the amount of queries that your chatbot picks up. You can do things like implement a knowledge base that goes into place before the pre-chat survey, so that you're filtering out as many of those overflow queries as you possibly can. So as well as being reactive to, to the need for flexibility for internal changes, just think about these types of external changes that might impact you as well. Um, if any of you are working in kind of sensitive environments that might be affected by social or political change, that's something to think about. Even putting that to a side, we all know that customer experience is ever-changing. The needs of customers are evolving. The technology that's out there is changing. So whatever plan you put together, don't make a huge two-year plan and say, this is the plan, we're going to stick to it. It's not going to help you. Build in flexibility, keep reviewing, and that plan will stand you in good stead then for the future, no matter how much the future changes. So moving on to the very final point that we have here then, Seek out the expert. Now for you, you might be philosophically committed, you might be culturally committed to delivering the best possible customer experience, but you won't be operationally ready until you have the right partner and the right technology to guide you through. And what I would say is behind every great chat experience is a great live chat platform and a great vendor that enables your business to give the kind of service that your customers want and need. And when I'm talking about great vendors, I'm not just talking about those salespeople who want to take your money, who want to push their products out and just leave you to it. Really good vendors should really help you to meet your business needs and they should challenge you to push further. So questions to ask yourself, do they really understand the experience that you're aiming to provide? Can they bring real creativity and innovation to your application of live chat? And what's more, can they challenge you to think beyond your initial perceptions, to build a program that's maybe greater than what you set out to provide? Because they should be in an ideal place to know the technology, to know the experiences they can give, and to mesh that with what you're aiming to do. That is a wrap for today. Kay, any closing comments from you? Not much from me. Thank you for your time, for logging on for this hour to listen to us. You can see our email addresses here on this slide. Very happy to field any questions you might have. If you have asked any questions that we haven't got round to, then we will catch up with you offline. That's great. I agree. There's our contact information. Thanks for your time today, everybody. Have a great rest of your week. Thanks.